girls welcome to the youtube live stream so happy to have you here today on this beautiful beautiful fey day welcome matthew Ooh. <laughs> wait wow right when we went live on youtube matthew went on joined on clubhouse <laughs> how fantastic is that oh my gosh i'm so happy to have you here how are you matthew welcome feel free to come up on stage if you feel inclined come through <laughs> hey, how are ya? Hello, beautiful. Yeah, we just started. Okay, I just saw I just saw me so, so I see that you've been doing the work on Instagram. Yeah, and you know, we actually just decided this as of this day today. We just decided to go start going on at 12.21 instead of 11.11. So I know it makes it more accessible for you over on the West Coast, too. So I'm so happy that we got uh, to catch you. Mm. Yeah, it's been a pretty intense last couple of weeks, for sure. We have a vision quest this week. We put nine people on the hill yesterday. And I have uh, last night I put up a 11-year-old. His name is Ryan. Wow. And uh, vision quest is uh, four days without water and so all they do is sit up there on the mountain looking at Mount Shasta and the place that they do it at is called um, uh, Scarface Ridge oh, wow. and so Scarface Ridge is a pretty intense uh, walk up this hill it's like 45 degree angle it's just straight up and so one of the things about the quest is that we try to deter people from taking too much stuff right because they have, they have to carry it up. You want to go on quest, you got to carry it up. So Zion, a little smart little bugger, but he got a little, uh, he has one of those uh, backpacks that you can put around your, your your back. And he just walked right up there like it was no big deal. Made us all look like we were out of shape. But, uh, yeah, it was cool. So he's, uh, he's been up there 24 hours now. Oh, wow. And, uh, check on him today to see how he is if he wants to stay up there. Because kids, man, if they do this, right, uh, it's like it's, it's inspiring to other people because if the kids are listening to what, when they want to follow this way, this way of life, this way of path that we're on, you know, it's beautiful to see, you know, and, and kids inspire other kids, you know, and they become, they become that uh, spokesperson for that age group. Right. And it's just amazing how that happens so yeah so we have nine people up, so i'm going to be going up there in a little bit hanging for them and then uh, we have a sweat lodge tonight at six so it's been a really really powerful right? and i'm just going to tell you what's been happening here in Alcasa is uh there is a energetic frequency and around our area here in the mountain i'm not sure really what it is but it, it feels like like i was driving from a, a town that's about 40 miles north of, of us uh, and i was driving back and i was looking at the mountain i can feel a sensation of like like this impeding dimension coming into this realm yeah and and i as you know because i can focus on those things and feel into creation in a very very you know um where I can just feel the, the intention of why that energy is there. And it just feels like a lot of the old ways is coming back. You know, a lot of the old traditions, a lot of the old songs, a lot of the old timelines are interjecting with this timeline. And I can feel the frequency of this place as if it was reborn again, mm -hmm. as if it was just discovered again. You know what I mean? Like it's like the first time looking on the mountain because we see it every single day. But for some reason, the mountain just looked different. And so there's like this energy that is around our part of the world uh, and I feel that I've been feeling this for a couple months now and I have a strong belief that it's because of the ETs the ETs the more that they show their frequency on the planet they're changing uh, the collective they're changing the energy of the collective and they're helping people become more in tune with each other and as people become more in tune with each other it's just like when you wake up and the ability in your body, right, all the other abilities become realized. 
just one ability. It's like it's like the leaves of a tree. You can't just have one ability and work with just that. You're going to be able to define, become aware of all your other abilities, all your desires, your telepathy, you know, all those energies that we feel is that, that are untouchable before are now touchable and perceived. And so when the ETs bring this energy to the planet, it helps us to feel a more connected nutrition rather than technology. And so more people are coming into this part of the world and experiencing Mount Shasta, the rivers. I mean, the rivers right now are just flowing hard. This time of year, last year, I was out fishing in the river, catching a kinds of trout. Not, not this year. Not this year. Everything's covered in snow still. The water is just just coming down off of the, the Rockies. And, I mean, you can't even fish it. In fact, my dog jumped into the river because he likes water, but he little did he know <laughs> the water was running too fast. So he couldn't even climb back up. He kept sinking, so I had to grab him by his, his fur. And pull him up. No! He was scared. He's like, I'm sorry, Dad. I said, yeah, now you know. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so, uh, yeah, but it's just been really, really beautiful here. Everything is just, there's flowers and, and wildflowers coming up that I've never seen before. All kinds of freaking beautiful this energy here. So it's just amazing to witness all this stuff. Oh and God. so it's just, yeah, it's been a lot, last couple months has been tremendous. So it's like the perfect time to have ceremonies. Like grandfather knew exactly what to do this year for people to awaken, mm-hmm. you know, there's less stress, there's more people waving at each other, <laughs> more people are out with their dogs, you know, Man, it's just a really beautiful experience to see how people are interacting with each other now, you know, and it's just, it's just amazing, so I just wanted to share that with it. And I thank you so much for sharing it too, because that's just an affirmation for everything that we've been experiencing. We took a but well, we weren't here last Fay Day, right, Kelly? We were here, yeah, we were here last Fay Day. So we've taken some time, um, you know, just to recoup and get everything, everything back in order. I just graduated, um, like, the other day, like, two days ago. I turned 22 uh, last Wednesday. So it's just been a huge, you know, in, intake of energy for me personally. Um, but I can only imagine how everyone else is feeling on the collective. So I thank you so much for speaking to that because it definitely was – a lot of where we've been flitting and fluttering and flying through over these past few days and uh, through planetary periods as well over the Monday to Sunday energy fields. Um, Kelly, how are you feeling? Oh, absolutely. Um, oh, wait, um, I'm going to on um, my clubhouse. Hi, Matthew. Hi, Matthew. Hi, brother. Hi, so good to see you here in this space. Thank you for bringing in that extremely powerful and beautiful, loving resonance and that frequency from Mount Shasta and from the galactic family, um, um, your galactic families from Pallades. I have felt that energy moving through, streaming in through We had um, incredible weather here in San Antonio where I am. This past week we had storms. We don't usually have storms like this here and flooding. And so just that influx of that water is uh, just a beautiful sign to me of bringing in the new frequencies from these dimensions and just a cleansing of of Mama Gaia and all those energies from the ancients. Um, I feel the ancients around us all the time. I feel like I see and things just feel very different for me as well. Even looking up at the sun and the feeling the radiance of the sunbeams just feels so different. It just feels different and it feels so soothing to be in this experience and in this resonance. It's just such a huge comfort to know that we've made it here to this time and that it's really happening. And I feel the incredible love, planetary love growing as this resonance comes in from our galactic families of light and how they are changing who we are um, and, and helping us to understand ourselves on a different level. Our consciousness is expanding. And even the people that are not, quote unquote, awakened yet, I already feel a shift in their energies as well. So 
Thank you, thank you, thank you, Matthew, for bringing that up. I, I feel all of that tremendously. And even personally in my personal life, I just feel very different. I feel very strongly now about just stepping into these spaces with complete sovereignty and just being 100% authentically me. And that is truly where we're moving into. And I feel the Lemurians and the Atlanteans and all the ancients that have been here on Mama Gaia are here and coming forward. But also, as you said, the galactic families are returning to reunite with all of the earthly beings and all of the ancient beings and all nows and in all dimensions and just the multidimensionality and all the parallels realities are just merging together and all of the ascended masters all of the angelic realms and the angels from other times or not times but other dimensions like i have had experiences with archangel christiel who's from another universe and brings in this beautiful golden yellow resonance and is here to support us as we go through this expensive experience as a collective and and I've just had this incredible craving to be in nature and to just have this desire to jump into the ocean so I feel the oceans of the world and all of the waterways opening up and I feel us all being connected and all of the sentient beings like the whales and the dolphins and octopi and all of the oceanic mer people and mer beings coming online and as well as Agartha and the inner world um, of earth coming online and coming back up to the surface through the water. So, so incredibly powerful. And um, so I'm so happy that you're here, Matthew, to bring in that message. Thank you so much. I love you. I love you. I love you. Six. Now for. And uh, amount of energy that has been people are enjoying the energy of creation and nature here right now. So in that enlightenment that they connect to with the creation here in Mount Shasta, they draw all different kinds of energies: the, the Lemurians, the, the Lemurians, the Atlanteans, the Pleiadians. You know, and so. Like when I'm in the lodge, I sometimes like this one. He calls himself Lakshmil, and he's completely white light, and he's carrying a bundle in his hand. It's like a bundle wrapped in skin, completely white, airway, white body, white light. Is so he came in for this one group. He stood the door, and everybody, and I didn't. See Thing. I, just, I just saw him, I bowed to him, and he was like looking at everyone. And then I started to sing the song. I remember that where like they went right into their core issues and started to speak about it. And it's something that they have been trying to feel comfortable about doing uh, this whole process of their retreat. But when I came to the lodge and the spirit appeared, it was like the darkness was able to support them and not be seen by others, including, you know. Uh, feeling too vulnerable, feeling ashamed about what he said, the the energy that the spirit created that was seen enabled these women to express themselves, get rid of the issues that they had from childhood. And so all these things have been happening in a very, very uh, accelerated way. And so where, you know, we can't ever go back and live the way we used to. Everything is changing right now beyond our understanding. That's part of the whole ascension process. This is removing the whole paradigm of racism, the programs, and things that we were raised with. We're actually coming out of our shell, kind of just letting our whole skin fall from
our bodies and come into the true human beings that we're meant to be. And so that's, I feel that is a strong, um, uh, just resilience that we're all experiencing in our own, our own way. And, you know, we all have our stories that how we were got, how we got here. Some people, you know, you know, and I'm not making any judgments. I'm just like observing. Some people are super into religion and they see this change as a negative thing rather than a positive thing. But that's just, the, you know, and you can't really change that in a person because that's their will. And everyone needs to have, to have their own ascension process story to where they get to the next level of understanding. But it's not up to us to get on a soapbox and try to fix that. Because that's not what it's about. It's about living who you are. And by living who you are, you give another person an experience that they need to have for themselves without even talking. Lately, a lot of the scripts that I've been working with is all about telepathy. It's about looking in their eyes and visualizing what makes you happy. And then they send something back, they even make you more happy. You know, so it's just a matter of learning and relearning what the God consciousness really is. And, and uh, when people are ready for that truth, they'll feel it, they'll step into it. And it's an automatic, organic, natural way that we uh, ascend, you know. And there's been a lot of fanatics going out of their way to really repress that. And that's what the Bible does. That's what church does. When I had, I had, a, when I grew up, I had a lot of uh, priest friends. Father John Catterfield, him and I were fishing, but he just died like, you know, three or four months ago. And then there was my Kukayo, Father Mateo Shidi. And so when I was growing up, I questioned everything that they had taught. I asked them about angels. I asked them about spirits. They didn't know what to say. Because uh, a lot of the things that I grew up believing, they knew in my heart wasn't true. I knew there wasn't a hell. I knew there wasn't a devil. I knew all these things, but I didn't know how to convey that. So I kept it to myself. And part of like the Hawaiian teachings too is that when we have an experience, you know, with God in our own way, our spirit way, you know, it's all about learning to keep your mind, which means you don't talk about it to a lot of people unless you feel. Uh, um, that you know your words are gonna be able to help the person ascend or have a have a opportunity for them to express their own experience that they've had. You know what I mean? So now is the time. You know, now is the time that all our tribes. There's a, a what's his name? Uh, the chief is coming down to Mount Shasta. Uh, Arvo Looking Horse. He's, he's the one that takes care of uh, the Chanukla in Greengrass, um, South Dakota. He's the one that received, her family received the white buffalo calf pipe way back when in the 1800s. And it's been handed down, handed down, handed down, handed down to the following generations. So he's the chief of that pipe. And that pipe is a representation of all the other Chanukas or all the other pipes that we carry. It's connected to that one pipe that was given to us by, by white buffalo calf woman. And so he's coming to Mount Shasta and he's going to do a peace prayer for his land. Which is wow, everyone's kind of feeling it, you know. And so, if Spirit told him to come here, you know, there's a reason for it. And so, I'm going to try to sneak out for my son dance one day <laughs> to visit him because he knew my dad. And so, it's just a really powerful thing that why he's coming here, and everyone is feeling this tremendous amount of energy. So, it's just a, a really, really exciting time for us to be here and to be alive. So, that's what I'm Yeah, you know, uh, as I said, <clears throat> I had just I gone through these two major portals of my own personal life, and to see that being reflected on like the mass scale, and we're all experiencing it in our own ways, is making me so excited for everything that's to come. And you know, Kelly and I actually did a, a fairies, dragons, inner earth, mer being, uh, transmission meditation this past Sunday. And it was so glorious, and it was so divine. And we just had to tap into a whole other community of uh, awakening and awakening souls and spirits. And our galactic family has tripled, you know, as now and it's expanded into so many heights and sites and spaces and places. And it is an affirmation that we are here in all realms and all realms just expanding. And it's not just us, like as individuals, but it's us as communities and as groups and as peoples. Uh, and to know that and to be confident in that is like making me so held in 
embrace in that knowing love of like just awareness. You know, there's no real like, physical contact that needs to be had. Uh, on most times, I did even just have my family up here in New York um, the past few days. And even that was just like, wow, they've never all been here together all at once. So just to see that. And then last night I was at a dinner um, with, you know, uh, two grandparents, like two sets of grandparents and the parents. It was just a whole, a whole table of beings people and spaces and places. And it was, again, the multiplicity of this present now moment of us being able to be seen in so many reflections and to not have to be held um, by you know, physicality of it all, but just knowing that we're all doing our own thing in our own spaces and corners and reality. And that also allows us for the expansion and awakening in this space because we're not all uh, attempting to fester and, and fumble up into one entire world or one entire place and one entire reality, we all get to expand into the multiverse. We all get to expand into all of our realms and dominions and centers and domains. And there's just so much for us to experience. I, I'm so thankful that you got to share some of your experience with you as well. And I really appreciate you for being here always. And I look forward to hearing to you um, through this situation also. Welcome to the space too. And Joan, I believe this is the Joan that gave kind of this beautiful message to you, um, for her birthday. <laughs> Hi, Joan. Hey, how are you? It is. Hi, love. How are you? Hey. I'm wonderful. Yeah, that's great. I just I in for a second for a second. Um, but yeah, y'all are. People from our parents and grandparents and all that have no idea, no clue. Church doors, knowing <laughs> anything that anything that we we um, we know, and we we have so many um, so many of us now, and. We're not just the, the 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 black sheep. We're not the you know we're we're sheep of different colors. Get real. We're <laughs> we're we're the rainbow out there, and um, it, it it's amazing the different people and the different things that um, gifts that people have hid over the years. I don't know how that rang through my head, but um, yeah, there's there's things that and nobody knew. But my mother, she was a seer. She could see things. I could never get away with anything when I was a kid. I mean, yeah. and um, and came to find out on her funeral, I found out there was a bus service that nobody even knew who, who what, and where, why. <laughs> and I thought that you know, it's only when you're comfortable and you're in a certain place that that you know people open up. You know, you open up your heart to let other people in. And that's really hard because people hurt people like us for a long time. And I think they just didn't know how to take us, so they just tried to, you know, to put us down or verbalize us in a different way. And um, I think it's a really blessed time for everyone. And it's just been an amazing ride. I mean, it's yeah, you know, I spent 30 years in the making, and I took some, I didn't really know I was going to be out for 10 years, but uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm learning some new verbal abilities, new tools, and the toolbox, and all kinds of stuff. But mainly, I just feel like we all need to just be happy with the people that we know, know who and what we are. Yeah. And I'm not gonna say, you know, because I'm I'm talking to different people, they learning how to start on the you know, get them grounded and you know, and pray and meditate, things like that. I feel like that's that's kind of my purpose is to is for the people to find me so that I can give them my knowledge. And I and I think that's I think this is, I think it's absolutely wonderful and we don't have to go beat them up with a Bible to go <laughs> Like 
And um, but that just I just don't feel like that's what I mean, God loves God likes all that, I'm sure. But um, but for the most part, I think he just likes to hear good hearts, mm-hmm. good laughter. Mm-hmm. Something that doesn't require someone to um, to do those things. Mm. It just comes naturally. So anyway, my my mumbling thought for the day. <clears throat> I am so grateful that you have come into this resonance, into this experience. I'm so honored that you have brought in this, all of the ancestors with you into this vibration, into this experience, because this is perfect and divine timing as always, because Matthew was just speaking to exactly what you transitioned through um, with your share, is that the ancients and all of our ancestors and then our elders that are bringing in, bringing back online the wisdom of our sovereignty and our beingness and our, you know, true divine essence and that all of our gifts are to be shared and that we are all here to serve one another in that way and that each and every one of us has something to offer and that it's all very individual and designed that way so that we can all you know come together as one and so you bringing that beautiful vibration into this space is just so incredibly beautiful and meaningful. And I'm so grateful and honored that you did so and that you have followed your true authentic purpose and that you pursue your joy, your excitement, and you, do, you don't allow the world to dictate what that looks like for you or for anyone else. And that non-judgment is what's bringing us back into our natural soul flow, into our natural state of being. And that's what the Rainbow Warriors are coming online to bring us back to our, our true soul flow and soul essence. And as Matthew was sharing, it's, you know, when the nations and the elders step forward, there's no better sign than that to know that it's time for each of us to step into the light and step into our true authentic beingness. And that's what we're here doing each and every moment in each now moment. Some of us are conscious of it and some of us are unconscious of it. But either way, our higher selves and our souls know what we all came here to be and and to be love. The true essence of all of us is love. And so I love you. I love you. I love you, Joan. Thank you so much for being here. I feel all of the ancestors celebrating with us and surrounding us. And I bow in honor. At the beauty of this moment. All of the oceans. All of the beings of the oceans. All of the galactic beings. All of the angelic beings. All of our ancestors. And from all nows are coming forward now in this now moment for us all to receive. I love you, I love you, I love you. <laughs> it's, like, it's 
I truly feel the resonance of your words, Joan. My my heart is open and expanded and I was, you know, and I've been having headaches all week. I know I've been celebrating very hard, so it's you know partially a due cause to that. However, I am feeling radiant and free from all pain and all uh, disillusionment. I just feel so clear and really illuminated at this point. I mean, you, all three of you, truly are such direct source conscious channels. And I can just feel it running through my systems and radiating from head to toe. So thank you so much. And thank you, Matthew, for stopping by as you were able. I love you all so much. And I welcome Laura and Paula to the room as well. And hi, Shani. Thank you for being here. I did want to uh, allow some time now for Kelly Love to um, introduce some of the cards pulled for the day. And then I'll do so as well, um, though. I want to be able to co-create in all ways. So here, Kelly, back to you. Mm, love rising, beautiful, beautiful Fay. Happy Fay Day. I'm so excited to be in this resonance right now. I have felt a an, an incredible desire to dive into the ocean all week long. And I feel like we're all diving into these new energies and the energies are watery and lovely and all encompassing with this tremendous ancestral Lemurian, Atlantean and galactic cosmic waters. And so I only pulled today cards from beyond Lemuria because I really feel the Lemurian resonance and the energy of that energy bringing in all of the ancestors and the elders into this space. And there is no coincidence that you are here in this now moment bringing in your resonance. The first card that I pulled was Ether. Yeah, my call has a zero point field, the void, blank canvas, 
threshold. Anything is possible. Time to choose what you want to bring into your life. Endless possibilities. Limitlessness. Paradox. This illuminated space of no distraction and pure potential is beyond the threshold. It is the silent meditative moment out of time. The centered present place beyond the hustle of the mind and outside world. It is where all dreams are birthed and it is the light we may fear to be darkness when just one moment everything ceases to exist. This is the place between worlds, the womb before we incarnated. And from here, we can choose where we go. The land has been tilled in readiness for the flowers we wish to see. Outdated doors have been closed and in the space between the breaths, we open new ones. What may be perceived as endless black nothingness is actually the illuminated eternal, the core that all, all our hearts may be peeled back to. When we step through the darkness, we realize it is only a short distance from one white void at the center of creation and heaven. Herein lies the feeling that we may have been striving our whole life to meet, and yet simultaneously, subconsciously running from. In this place of graceful surrender, we may know we are held and allow ourselves the spaciousness to drop deeper into the experience of our existence. Now, the kati to 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 kati 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 ko ya tai ti. I receive this beautiful energy with love and gratitude for each of us. And it's absolutely no coincidence, Joan, that this card was pulled before you came into this space as you are also a portal. The second card I pulled was the portal keeper. Unique gateways to mystical experiences, psychic ability, raising your vibration, expanded consciousness, the Akashic records, past life ties, exploring the edges of reality for significant messages, seeing between the lines and multidimensional awareness. As we become more sensitive and aware, we are more receptive to mystical experience. We can realize there are overlying realities that seem just as real, if not more vibrant and profound than the familiar everyday one. There is a theory that space and time are constructs that allow our human minds to grasp sequences in chronological order and enable us to orient and move forward through reality. In their current evolution, humans are only using a small portion of their brain capacity. If we unlock our mind's potential, what would we fathom that we can't now? There is information out there that isn't real to us until we glimpse it with our senses. The beings of Lemuria evolved with a different kind of intelligence. 
They were skilled at harnessing energy from natural and abundant forces such as crystals, the heart of the earth, and the moon. They could, they could share complex information without words. The Lemurians operated in multiple realms at will and could disappear from human perception. Technically, they were in the same location, but in an overlaying reality, a parallel in the same location, but in an overlaying, overlaying reality, a parallel dimension which could, be, which could be very different. Psychically advanced people can sense discarnate souls, elementals in nature, and spirit guides. They can also see information in energy fields. These perceptions, clairvoyance, clairsentience, or clairaudience, are still connected to this reality but are examples of what can happen when we raise our consciousness or train ourselves to the subtleties of what is happening around us. In essence, we share our physical location with overlaying beings and energies and can raise or lower our vibration to match and enter their realms of reality. Two people in an identical environment can have different experiences. One may thrive and enjoy the opportunities of the moment. The other may see only the negatives in the situation. Here, one or both parties may be traversing realities on a micro level. These micro realms may look very similar, but they we, but the way they the way we feel the reflections we see in others and the way circumstances unfold are aligned with our vibration. So it's great to be conscious of our energy and the ways we can optimize our experience of life. Like attracts like. It is important to keep this in mind if you are considering traversing deeper realms as it is an endless rabbit hole. <laughs> See your energy field to the highest good and ensure your intention is primed for the places you wish to journey to. Traversing other realms is an innate ability that we all have Young children have this skill intact as they are not yet convinced that it is not real. Animals, especially cats, also have this awareness. People who experience hallucinations may be perceiving multiple layers of information simultaneously. In the West, this may be considered a symptom of diminished mental health. In other cultures, the openness could be the mark of a shaman or seer and considered a powerful gift. The Akashic paradigm combines multi multidimensionality with the idea that everything is happening simultaneously. Thus, everything that has ever been and ever will be is occurring at this moment. By changing our vibration, we can access an ocean of collectiveness. And this highlights the significance of portals. Portals are gateways to other layers of reality. They can be accessed through meditation and inner practices or externally in places such as the planet's vortices. These places are usually sacred to those who are sensitive to energies and who, close, and who work closely with the earth. Often where, they, where ley lines connect, portals are places where the veil is thin and unexplainable phenomena occur. Earth's ley lines are similar to the meridian systems on the body. 
Chakras are also energetic vortices. When we tune into them and the place places on the body they connect to, we can access holistic information. This oracle deck includes 10 chakra seed cards, which can activate these portals on the body. Portals are like an opening or rip in our usual veil of reality. If you feel pulled to explore this curious and vast topic further, it is wise to seek a mentor who is confident traversing these realities. However, simply understanding that there are dimensional layers can help you see between the lines, present in the knowledge that this reality is a fraction of the bigger picture. How are you connected to your mystical self? How might you raise your vibration to access information that isn't normally perceivable? How can you lift your spirits and soar into wider awareness so you can see from a heightened perspective? When our minds get out of the way, we can reach this bliss state of the seamless unspeakable where the need for a linear life drops away and we can center ourselves through a sense of eternal being. I had all of these fairies flying in and flying all around me as I was speaking in this space right now. And there was just this fluttering of wings all around me. And that's all I could hear as I'm speaking. <laughs> but the fourth card that I pulled, and this is the myrrh beings coming online right now and swimming into the space. Shine your light. And it's a beautiful Lemurian myrrh being on this card. Doing what you love. Time to thrive. Giving from the overflow. Life purpose. Being authentically you. Compassionate self-empowerment. Loving life. Trying things you resonate with bringing joy to others by being an inspiration. You are amazing. There is no one like you and no one can do you as you can. Yet we sometimes feel that we need to be a certain way, a way not aligned with our authentic selves. You may feel obliged to be something or someone. You may have stopped doing some of the things you love due to time or energy restraints. When you take time to do what truly makes you shine each day, you will light up and bring joy to other people's worlds. As you go about your life, you will have a sense of purpose and feel naturally inspired to fulfill your responsibilities, you will also have more energy and love to overflow. Doing what we love can bring so much goodness to our hearts that it filters into other areas of our life. <sighs> Yet when life is demanding more of us, we give up the things we love to make way for more practical pursuits. When we finally come back to these pursuits, we wonder why we ever waited. For much of my life, I did not paint. As though it was self-indulgent, I questioned how doing what I love could be beneficial to others. Now this constant message of gratitude I receive for anchoring my visions on canvas make me wonder how I ever thought that way. It takes discipline to do what we love, especially if we are natural givers. It is easy to get caught up with other people's lives 
there can also be a strong cultural belief that fulfilling a creative need is selfish. The irony here is that tending to our own needs harms none, and we will have a lot more to give. It is time for us to collect our light and shift the vibration here on earth, starting with our inner sense of being. Try those things you have always wanted to explore. Weave enjoyment through your day-to-day -day experience. Find purpose in the inspiration to bring out, to spring out of bed in the morning. It is time to thrive. We are being showered with this beautiful crystal white light with diamonds glittering all around us to illuminate us. And to remind us that our joy is creating beauty and love for all and all now. We all came here to create what we loved so that others could do the same. I love you, I love you, I love you, beautiful soul stars. And the last card that I pulled from this beautiful Beyond the Miracle Oracle card, it's by Izzy Ivy, it is the Star Seer. The Star Seer is a beautiful Lemurian holding a beautiful wand, and her third eye is just glittering and glistening and glowing, and her eyes are wide with excitement. The star seer, listen to your intuition. Trust the holistic journey. Dreams finding their way into being. The bigger picture, a more aligned outcome than expected clarity of the greater path. Have you ever headed toward a specific destination, but instead of it being where you ended up, the journey was a catalyst for getting you where you were meant to go, such as being here now? Have you ever felt the universe was complete? conspiring against you and nothing seemed to be working out as planned, but then everything came together in a way that was so perfect. This card is about the journey, not going as planned, but the outcome being better than you thought possible. <laughs> when we set our dreams and intentions, internal or external shifts may need to occur before we start to see results. Outdated doors may need to close. Ideas that are holding you back may need to transform. Life's winding roads may make it seem as though you are off the path, despite how right your decisions may feel. Trust and know that your higher self may have bigger plans for you. There might be some adventures on the way or not. The road you take depends on how ready you are and the distance between your current life and the one you are dreaming into being. This card depicts intuition as a goddess. She is lifting you out of the clouds of confusion and mind noise and showing you the clear way forward. She is your higher self and can see your great potential. 
trust your instincts, and have faith in your dream, you are already on your way. I feel my wings expanding and my fins flipping. I'm ready to swim and fly and soar into the magic, into the magic of our dreams and create these realities for all now. <laughs> I see this ancestor putting on a scuba gear. <laughs> Play, beautiful ones, play. I'm muting on YouTube. It was so beautiful that you pulled those cards because um when I, Matthew was speaking, I pulled from the dragon deck and then two, I was like, okay, I need one from the dragons and then two from the Lemuria deck. And so the first one that came out, the aquamarine dragon from Neptune. Okay. Enabling us to access our deepest soul wisdom. I'm actually gonna have to read this entire one because what happened actually during earlier today. So right now, you know, we are obviously in this Taurus new moon energy. So we're diving already through so many portals of expansion and abundance and beauty and benevolence with now Mercury, Uranus, Taurus, sorry, Mercury, Uranus, um, the sun, the moon, um, and the dragon's head all in Taurus right now. So there's just such an abundance of energy in one ancestral alignment. So already on that end, there's so much energy coming through. But even more so, it's now this space for us to dive into the awareness that we have all of that fluttering, flying, and soaring through and around us at this time. So we get to dive into these waters ourselves and expand. You know, earlier today, again, um, Mercury sextiled Saturn and Pisces and then um, the moon sextiled Neptune at 9.39 in the morning, right? And so thou, this moon in Taurus being here, and then later today, the moon going on to sextile Mars, which is Mars in Cancer, there's so much magic for us to play with. Later, even the moon trines Pluto, and Pluto, again, is also she was Scorpio, and this under-the-sea, underworld energy. And so we get to, again, go into all these portals of expansion, and um, dive into our deepest sense of knowing. So I'm going to read directly from the aquamarine dragon who is resting on the 82nd and 83rd pages. And I, again, the word ether came through really heavily earlier. And ether, imagination, inner realm, subconscious mind, they all add up to 11. And that 11 energy is such an expansive master number that dives us into just pure energy, pure awareness of our inner realms and our inner reality and that which flows forth abundantly from our deepest soul wisdom. So this aquamarine dragon from Neptune enables us to access this deepest soul wisdom, knowing that spirituality and wisdom are available to each and every one of us now to develop our psychic abilities and receive ineffable soul knowledge, Neptune is the watery planet of advanced spirituality and enlightenment. The aquamarine dragons from this illuminated planet carry the light of the universe, which contains spiritual information and knowledge. They will approach us and ask us to tune into them so that they can download this light into our energy fields. And again, I just wanna mention these cards, if you see it on YouTube, it has a trident in his hand and a key. The album or the soundtrack for The Little Mermaid just came out earlier today. And so again, there's just this energy of diving into the sea and being one with the water. And I'm so thankful that we get to be and bask in this beauty. It's truly beautiful. This, the diving in and downloading of light will enable us to take information and know how to apply it wisely. As these gentle dragons flow around us, 
They help us to access more of our ineffable soul, knowledge, and wisdom and pass it to others humbly, sincerely, and honestly. They have the ability to pour liquid light into us, which builds our crystalline light body more quickly and enables us to shine. They also enhance our psychic development by enabling our psychic our psychic chakras to open up more easily. We may find our subtle knowing is heightened after encountering them. It's so funny, earlier today, I mean, literally 10 minutes, 20 minutes into this um, transmission, I was writing about the subtle fields of energy that the planets and the stars are impacting, even if one is not aware of astrology, numerology, celestiography, or the like, they're still being impacted on the subtle fields. So this card is really making us aware of that at the deeper levels. And if we can just receive the knowing that they exist and that they dance above us and around us, within us, throughout us, we can dive into a deeper awareness of all that is and all that we are alongside of it. These aquamarine dragons from Neptune are water dragons. They will flow around you, surrounding you with their aquamarine energy and awakening your psychic abilities. Connect with them often for each time you do so they will light up more of the keys and codes of your true essence. This will bring your soul contentment and a sense of your divine magnificence and you will experience higher levels of enlightenment and see your world and the universe through different eyes. Your guidance is to drink a glass of blessed water as you tune into these dragons. Then they will be able to touch you more profoundly. Wow, okay. Hey, <laughs> I love Kelly so much. The YouTube is so lit. <laughs> Drinking oh my, my water right now. Oh, thank you, Joan, for that as well. Joan mentioned in the um, Clubhouse chat, may you have a continued blessed gifts, Lemurian power is so strong with dragon protection. Breathe in the different levels to receive. Mm. Well, I'll just quickly go over these other two cards that flew out from the Lemuria deck, the Beyond Lemuria deck. The first one, of course, which was just so funny as we were talking a little bit earlier about this expansion and acceleration and awakening, is the evolution card. And you can see the DNA strands illuminated and the tails and the flippers and the fins as we dive deeper into this soul wisdom, as we dive deeper into the waters of creation and expansion, we can remember all that we are. I love this evolution card. We are expanding ourselves ultimately forevermore. It's also 24 evolution. So two, four is six and six is Venus and Venus is magic and I love it. The other card that flew out was 49, the infinite. And she's just expanding with a scarab and wings and just all things in self. We are the all and we are the stars. We are everything that we see and more because we dream. I love you all so much. And I thank you so much for being here at this time to receive the magic. I love her so much. Joan is so cute. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Wow. I love I see like a stars. And the threes and the spirals. Okay, we're ready to dive in. Oh wow. Um, did you want to share anything before we go? No, I am I'm already there. I think I'm already there, Ellington. I'm already I feel like I'm already there diving, you know, swimming and gliding. And, you know, I mean, I'm just, my wings already spread, you know, as soon as we started speaking earlier with Matthew and Joan, you know, I was just already starting to um, have this, ex this beautiful experience had already begun. The space was already so incredible in all of our beautiful ancestors and beings of light are just have just been waiting 
for us to go on this trans, you know, this beautiful journey today. So they're excited. The oceans are just lit up right now. They're all illuminated with this um, beautiful resonance. And there is a beautiful myrrh party going on in each of the oceans and also the galactic cosmic oceans and all of the um, Agartha from inner earth have already come to the surface uh, in this in this experience to celebrate and to journey with us today. So, and all, like I said, all of the ancestors and elders are here and the angels are surrounding Gaia and Gaia is excited for what we're about to experience. This is going to be an incredible activation incredible activation so everyone please 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 get your water we all need to drink the waters that we are being gifted today and um, allow ourselves to be immersed and to be submerged in this resonance wow it's incredible you know as you were saying that elea texted me and asked me if i wanted to go to an art event um a little later today and it's called sleeping beauty <laughs> okay <laughs> oh wow okay so with that i am certainly prepared to begin oh my gosh it's been a joy it's been a true joy, magic, benevolence, beauty, abundance, bounty, and just pure, pure, pure energy fluttering in. And so as we begin to breathe in through our nose, itayakoi nayashi iki te ayata iku itayaka elasha ai. Misukoi i iti 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 iku kuku ai. Nayalakaya sai toyo shuku oi. Niti de kaya tai tai u wishi ti de kai na ya sai wo ya shiki ai ta shiki Welcome Alaya <laughs> Happy to see you in the space just as we're beginning to dive into the waters of expansion We allow ourselves to come into our center and fluttering in with a deep inhalation through your nose, filling up your belly, fluttering past your solar plexus and expanding into your sacral. You can breathe out through your mouth and continue that flow of deep inhalation and equal exhalation. And finding any position which suits you best at this time, making you the most comfortable to relax in and settle into self and into center. Allow your eyes now, your two physical eyes, to flutter to a close. As you open up your first eye, your mind's eye and expand into your inner realm.
Find yourself seated upon a grassy knoll at the top of a large, great hill. High above the clouds, you can feel the moisture in the air dancing around your skin. The ether picks up, streaming down and around, in through your crown, straight from the cosmic oceans herself. And as you bask in this sensation, simply breathing in the deep inhalation, You know yourself to be at peace. Down below the mountain top, you can hear the sounds of the sea of soul. Ring, reverberate through your ears. Dolphins at play, chiming in the wind, carried up to your ears, holding you in their embrace. A stream now appears to your right. Flowing from the top of this hill all the way down, 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 past the clouds. And jumping in now, diving deep into the waters of this eternal stream, the Koi Itirishiki. You are held, loved, enveloped in the waters of creation. That bring back to your subconscious mind, the memory of this universe and yourself as one. As you enter in, even deeper still, the stream flows like a slide down the hill. And 
in your aquatic form begins to unfold before your eyes. Your fins and flippers, tails and the light. begin to come online, expanding you ultimately into the waters of the divine. And as you float, slip, slide down this grassy hill through this watery stream, down in the waters deep beside you appears an aquamarine dragon from Neptune This dragon, serpentine in form, carries with them a trident, glorious gold, matching the colors of the sun, radiating with such light that it dances upon your skin. You can feel deeply into the embrace of their love as they swim with you sliding down this hill off into a waterfall where together you slip right off, flutter and glide down now deep out, past, through the sky, and into the sea of soul. We're a part of merfolk, sea folk, tritons and sirens, dance and play, slip and slide. Frolicking in the waters of pure joy and light. Here now the sun dances on their skin, glowing and glistening upon their scales and their tail. You can sense yourself now beginning to float on the waves of the water held in this aquatic embrace. Chimes upon your arrival, and out past behind the waterfall, you can see and sense a present inner cavernous space that beckons you forth and calls you in to its embrace.
And as you enter in through this waterfall's backspace, you're enchanted by the large stalactites and glistening pink, purple, and blue crystals of all shapes and sizes that dance in the light of the space in which you are held. It is in here at the diamond dolphins and the pods of merpeople and the nymphs, nerids, oceanids too. find a home for themselves and for even you too. Splashing and playing in the water so bright. You can see the reflections of the stalactite. The water is so clear, iridescent and blue. The plasma bioluminescence fills all of you up with pure light. In this cavernous site. And you can sense the peace now rushing over you and the abundance of joy in this sacred space. Out from the sea, the sea of soul. A large hippocampus arrives, take you, guide you on a journey deep below. And as you mount on its back with your dragon by its side, you dive deep below deep inside the waters of this space. moving at light speed swiftly through the currents. You can sense space and time both beginning to shift like the heavens. Reminded that all spaces are reflections of another, mental, aquatic, cosmic, and the like. You may be held in the waters now, though in your heart, you know you're in space. Joy frequency radiates 
regardless of the time or place. Coral beds shaped like planets. And sea stars twinkle like light. The sea of soul begins to merge. With the celestial sea and the cosmic oceans that hold them all. Itaya kai ii lakoto ui ti ii Itaya kai naya kui siki Naya kai oi itaya kai Moi ii 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 I lie, lie, lie. No, I. After some time, you can envision yourself beginning to arrive in a tropical under the sea forest jungle. Space so lush with vines, trees that nearly touch the skies. And sea monkeys dance from the treetops. while seahorses frolic darting in and out behind large rocks you can breathe in deeply now for the water and the air here right now are one. Feel free to call forth your sea folk brethren. Your sister and celestial twins are here for you now. Your ancestors. And the planets, the 
satisfying in the mood. All of them converge here with their light streams dancing about and within, betwixt and between, above and below, within and without. You can sense yourself now beginning to rise. Rising up from the sea floor. And allowing this hippocampus to guide you on to the pristine black sand beach. The shores that have called your name since the beginning of time and space. And arriving here together, you can sense your body now beginning to morph once more as you sprout your wing and allow yourself to soar, you can think as hippocampi, we're taking you to shore, and you can watch as they dive back down to the sea floor. as your wings expand and flutter and grow. You can see before you a totem aglow. shaped in the glyph of Venus. This large gold and copper rose colored totem pole welcomes you home. and invites you to fly and to soar in through its central hole. And the moment you do, the world transforms. Any and all fears, shame, doubts, guilt, or that which may have ever caused you harm, it slips away. Dives below. 
and you are simply held in the love and the embrace of the magic of creation and the beauty, benevolence, harmony, unity, peace, trust, joy, that is your birthright. Smile through it all and let yourself shine. The skies are aligned. And the stars twinkle and shine. While there is still so much to see, this journey is nearing its end. And to support you into its close, a bright, brilliant rainbow appears. made manifest right in the sky. This rainbow or moonbow, whichever you decide, stretches its own wings and expands to your side. and allows you to slide down its arched, curved back side. And as you near it to end, it drops you deep within the eternal river of creation. And it's iridescent purple plasma waters, amethyst in color, as you reach the end of the rainbow. You can begin to sense yourself rising up now, stirring back into your awareness from the tips of your toes,
anchoring in at your ankles. Moving up past your calves. Leveling at your knees. Fluttering through your thighs. And centering at your hips. As you begin to fuse into your root chakra, Dikitara Shokoi, you can sense your aquatic form beginning to transform back to your legs. Moving up through your sacral now, spitting the center of light. You expand through your breath in, to, and through the pool of your solar plexus, this nexus of energy and light. Expanding up now through your heart, past your chest, and down your collarbones, waving your wings through your elbows as you wiggle your wrists, wave your hands, your fingertips, outstretching your palms. You breathe in through your nose and allow this breath to carry you up through your throat, out through your mouth. In through your nose. You allow your awareness now to come back to your two physical eyes as you open them up. Moving past your first eye, deciding whether to keep it opened or closed. You have returned now back into your physical body, seated at the crown. Thank you so much for journeying with us. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back.
Y eran creando por ya tiki a arroz, por ya te corría ta eras. Y andurian por ya ta eras, te carros, te tía, tía, tu renta, tía, tía, por no copa tarjeta, te topa eras, ta eras, tía, tía, a soto. Y ahora, corría no a ja, ya ja, ya ja, ya ja, te os ya ja, ya ja, ya y ahora me ha topado y ahora me ha topado y ahora me ha topado This new resonance, y a taque a ayo para ahí, catae o chutuba, ira y sobre la ti. Your DNA is breathing in the light of ancestor, o priatae y a ti, ex ancestral knowledge, y a reine, a catae o chutuba, y a ti. You are being attuned to this frequency. Through the waters. The waters carry this vibration throughout each of your cells. And your cells are expanding to receive this cosmic yati galactic plasmic light You will notice that your body is craving sea water it is the salt of Mother Gaia nurturing your life force in this embodiment All of the food that you consume, you will crave foods of a very high vibration, filled with this plasmic light. Nurturing your expansion, you will step more into your solar alignments yashiyati you step forward into the sunshine yeah nice breathe in this 
vapor that is in the air, this water vapor that is being illuminated. Coats. As you move through this watery resonance, you will feel your opening, yati, kiati, yakiatuti, ati. Open your heart to receive. Breathe in light through the center of your heart. Allow the air in the water to nourish you. As you reconnect to your ancient lineage, lineage, Yakai Okatiati, the elders, Inayana Sotoriati. Your ancestral elders step forward from Lemuria. Yati Kayati Alania Yatokiatai Agartha Ikono Virati Kiatai Ladies Ishutriati Kiati Octarius Uriati Shariati Serious, Yashu Kaira Situ Kushaira Situ Shatai Kotai Shutu and Ramana Yamunka Nasutia Tai. The angelic realms, Yato Kuria Ti Kiati Kiati. The galactic cosmic dragon around yatuku shaitu kuti ayatu the elemental realms yakutu shaiti yatu all of the crystal caverns within the earth uriya saikiatai atukutai are vibrating their tones yatukuriyati asutiyati sounding their tones coming out through the waterways to all civilizations here on Gaia Ikaino Ikayano Yase Kutai Yase Kutai the rainbow warriors Iashotiati Ai Kuriatai are assisting you. As you move through these vibrations and frequencies, and you are activated in this new resonance. Receive with gratitude. And reverence, Uriya Saikyato, Ya Taikoti Ashaiki, to Ya Taikato, and remembrance of who you are, Ya Taikayate, Uriya Taikotai Saiti. I love you. I love you. I love you. Beautiful, 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 divine souls in the and all else in the
यहाती क्या तो ती तेराती Thank you. <laughs> Love you, Kelly. <laughs> So adorable, you're such a squash, you're such a sweetheart, such a heart, so much love. Mm -hmm. I love you, I love you, I love you so much, Ellington. That was so incredible. I cannot wait to immerse myself in that watery, really transcendent and transformational experience that you just brought us through. I cannot wait to dive back into that. <laughs> that was purely magical, just so magical and just so, uh, just yummy. Wasn't it yummy? Just, mm, just mm, all kinds of just tingling and floating and just being in that, you know, weightless, just completely weightless experience. There's just mm, so gratitude, so much gratitude to you. For you, thank you so much for being Ellington. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful to you and I'm just so honored. I'm just so honored to be in this resonance with you, co-creating these loving experiences for all and all nows. And I am excited to hear Alea, your share. So I will pause. I love you. I love you so much, Kelly. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And same, <laughs> truly same. It just was so much joy from the beginning to every every single second. And just the full and entirely pure channel of it all. I asked you where you wanted to go. Um, and I'm so glad that you were able to provide some inspiration and direction. And at that point, I was just like, let's just go through the inner realms. So really glad that you came up and asked us to, to venture in. That was so needed right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome, Alea. Welcome, Jenna. Happy to have you here. Thank you for being. Hey. Hi, Bailingshan. Hi, Lou Shelman. Hey. How's um, everyone? Thank you for this space. Um, basically, we are just in a transmission um, headed by Ellington and Kelly Love Light was with us and sharing some beautiful words and chants. And um, it was honestly, Ellington, you brought me at such a lovely time in and I feel very awake and lifted and I started feeling that like literally on my day off like took a day like took a few hits and I felt re-aligned with myself and your words were part of this transitionary period of me kind of fully letting you know my all of my love and my light be lifted to the place that it exists in to be seen for exactly what it is so i've just been hearing your words ringing through this space that i've created and i feel very moved i cannot wait to dip into it again on the transmissions thank you thank you and i love the you hear the sounds behind her it's so crazy that was incredible that I'm, yeah you definitely were in it <laughs> well you messed me at the right time i literally was i was telling you i was like oh my god not sleeping beauties like <laughs> to send them all to sleep <laughs> such perfect timing no literally <laughs> our disney princesses are here oh my gosh ah oh, one week away 
such a true joy and delight. And I'm so glad that you get to bask in. And uh, again, you answer the call, but that you also reached out. Like it's just, yeah, truly very perfect timing. And I think even on um, our YouTube community, I believe us that is and had been able to tune in as well. So that was incredible. Such beautiful myrrh, sea folk energy out here today and on this beautiful, beautiful Fey Day and this new moon. And again, what is it? A, like uh, Uranus, the sun, the moon, Mercury, Jupiter, and the North Node, the dragon's head, all in Taurus. That's six celestial bodies. That's six celestial bodies. That's six. Six today, I mean, it's again, six is a Venusian number. Six is Venus in numerology. And then to see six planets in her sign that were all in the ninth house during this transmission. It's just so incredible. There's just such six, nine energy happening today and, uh, you know, basking in all the magic and glory of that. And, you know, we, again, we're not here last Fey Day. So just to be here now in this embrace was really nice and it felt really uh, homecoming. And I was just really happy to be here and dive back in and, felt like really no time had passed, you know, and just, <laughs> I think, no, Kelly, I'm pretty sure it's been maybe two, because it was a lot, it, I'm pretty sure it was two Fey Days, because the other one, I, I had a, like a class project, I think, or something, I don't know, I just feel like it's been two Fey Days, but yeah, I'm happy we're back. <laughs> back You've been busy. Cool. And I thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Ellington. You. You've been busy. So time has been extremely moving extremely fast for you. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to congratulate you on such a huge and monumental accomplishment. You know, congratulations on graduating from NYU. I am just so honored to know you and to be able to congratulate you for all of those beautiful accomplishments that you have worked so hard for. You um, truly are a magical being of light, and I'm sure that you are going to create so much more magic in the world in all of the worlds and all nows and the whole cosmos is waiting for you and ready for you to step in and step out. And so I just wanted to take that time to this time to congratulate you and celebrate you and applaud you and give you your flowers and shower you in flowers and shower you in all these beautiful jewels and just to just show my gratitude for your hard work and your dedication and for you being so authentically you and so divinely beautifully you and teaching us all how to embrace ourselves in this magic that we all are. And you're just a beautiful shining star and a beautiful example for each and every one of us. And so I'm just truly honored truly honored to know you and to be a part of your world. <laughs> so thank you so much for taking us into all the magical places with you and teaching us how to go to those places and create those experiences. And I just can't thank you enough. I'm just so grateful. I um, really and truly felt like through that experience to Ellington, I was really submerged in the water. And so I, I told you, I was really, I've really been craving that so much. I live, I don't live close to the ocean, but I just had this intense craving to just dive into the beautiful salt water of the ocean and just be in the water and in that resonance. So thank you so much for taking us all into that beautiful realm. I mean, you took us through so many different realms, to be honest. You took us through quite a few. And um, I found the, um, was it, what was it, what was that, that it was like a, it was like a horse murphy. What was that? Exactly. A hippocampi. Yeah, I was like, whoa, I love horses. So I was like, okay, you just did it now. You know, because I uh, used to play with, you know, we all play with dolls and stuff. And I had like this mermaid. And then I never, 
I don't remember. I remember taking my, I loved horses and mermaids growing up, of course, you know, fairies and all the magical creatures and unicorns and stuff. But I remember playing in the bathtub, like my favorite time of day as a child, you know, little Kelly loved to jump in the tub and be the little mermaid. But also I would bring in my horses into the water, but you know, they didn't have fins and everything, but I just, they were plastic, you know, so I brought them into the water with my Merby <laughs> because those were my, you know, that was my magic. And so when you brought those in, I was like, the horses are here. And then I was like, wait, what did you call them? You know, and and I was like, wait, they have a name? They're a thing? Yeah. So I love that you're bringing that, that you're bringing all of that online for each and every one of us. It's, it's truly magical. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, it's it's pure joy for me to be able to do so. And it makes my heart really happy and very full. And, you know, again, yeah, it's, it's as much of a journey for each and every one of you as it is for me. I literally, again, that's why I love that it's also channeled because it's just like, where do we want to go? And I'm doing the meditation like myself. Um, so it's always really, really exciting. And I don't always get to go into that state. Sometimes I do have actually some like, basis or some foundation or some framework for kind of where I want to go and after I asked you I kind of thought about where maybe we might venture towards but nothing was really written out already so it was just really like getting to really explore and see who was wanting to come through and it was so fun and such an expansion and even again to the aquamarine dragons and all that it was like perfect like we that's really what I wanted to hang out with like I was like how can we bring them along the entire ride nice. Oh, wow. So, so this is the dragon. This is the image for the code that I was going to read today. I don't know if we'll have time. Code 19. It's a watery dragon. Do you see that? Yeah. I looked oh. over at it when you said that. And I was like, wait a minute. What? <laughs> watery dragons. What? In the inner round no, in inner reality and that's what's really important right now you know I, I was writing this earlier and I'll just mention it now um you know like um, even if people have yet to learn the language of astrology celestiography numerology or human design they're still being influenced by the energies of the planets and the stars and the moon and the sun in their subtle fields, like always, the, you know, their bodies that are just walking and dancing around and they have our tug and our pool and our, you know, because we are them. And so even all this, while all this is playing and out in the background of our subconscious and our unconscious, um, it influences our inner realms and our inner realities so much. And so it's really only until one becomes aware of these bodies, whether through meditation or whether through like actually like studying any of it, um, that we can actually begin to shape our like waking reality as well um, and have a more direct celestial alignment with everything that we're encountering, uh, knowing that the heavens are above and the diamond earth star rest below. When we sit ourselves directly in the middle of it all with the planets and the stars and the moon, the sun, we get to completely envelop ourselves with the magic of creation and we get to expand and elevate and evolve ourselves into those celestial bodies as well into those galaxies even nebulas and beyond that can hold and support these um, these life forms and the life forms that inhabit these life forms and so i love that you even pulled like the ether card earlier because you open the doorway um you know 11 ether it's is that the 11 what card is it what number is it of the deck it is the 11 right yeah, yeah because 11. um Ether without the A's is, is uh, translates to eleven numerologically, and ether, um, ethereal, uh, imagination again, subconscious mind, energy. All of these are eleven energetic words numerologically, and they all are opening the portals of expansion. And again, Kelly Love is an Aquarius, and the eleven energy is the eleventh. Uh, the, the Aquarius energy is the eleventh sign of uh, traditional astrology. So it's also incredible that you just have such a powerful role to play in that. Plus that Aries moon energy that we've just been experiencing, I know it was dipping and flipping and twisting and turning all over you as you had your lunar return these past few days. <laughs> and so now you just get to bask in the magic of it. And I did want to mention also that 
you're probably feeling all this cosmic ocean energy fluttering through you because Venus and Mars right now are both in um, Cancer. And so they're like combining their forces and to harmonize the energies of the cosmic oceans. And it's fluttering through you, as you know, you have a, a Cancer rising as well. And so they're definitely hitting you up and, and sending some light and love into your energy field also. And I found out actually, um, so I'm going to Atlanta tomorrow. I'm going to Atlantis tomorrow. No. <laughs> <But> okay, <right? laughs> and I haven't taken a flight in almost a year. So it's going to be such a great wing expansion. But also um, Mars goes into Leo tomorrow. And my brothers, they both have their Leo signs. I'm going to connect with them again. So they both have their Leo signs. So Mars is going to get out of Cancer, which has been, you know, digging up all the shit in our deep inner subconscious mind. And so now it's going to be, in a bit more of its home uh, or connected space with it being now going to move into Leo, which is going to be really exciting. And just like the Royal bloodlines are coming back. Like we've been on our sovereignty right now, but the royalty of it all is going to come back full force. So we're going to get to have our crowning graces and we're going to have our heart expansions. Cause we're going to know that we run and rule over the kingdoms of the day. And as well as the queendoms of the night. And we just have a complete and, entirely expanded uh, realm of operation at this time where we get to be again everything where we get to be one with the all and then with just venus and cancer it's going to be a wonderful time for us to bask in the beauty of the queens of uh, the sovereigns and queens of the planet venus and then um also tapping in like our throat energy and then also tapping in with the magic of Fatum, the fairy dominion, when that uh, the star center or star center comes back online later next planetary period in the following few days, I believe from the 21st, 20th, 22nd, maybe around then is when um, Venus comes back online in that direction. So I'm really excited about all that. It's going to be really fun, really beautiful. There's a lot of magic coming through the next few days. And I'm just, Kelly just did something on her screen I've never seen it before ever. <laughs> That was so cute. I hope it showed up on on YouTube. So, oh my gosh. Wow. Well, it's been a complete joy. Jenna, I would love to um, have you introduce yourself to this space. I know I haven't, well, I said, I know that I haven't, you haven't been here before, but it's always a home space anyways. And if you haven't been here physically, quote unquote, or uh, electronically, virtually, you've definitely been here energetically. So it's nice to see you and welcome you into the space and I thank you for being here. And then after we'll close out with the code from Kelly Love. Hi, Ellington. Thank you for being so welcoming. Um, I'm currently in Bennington, Vermont, and I'm longtime friends with Alea. And I've watched um, one of your transmissions on YouTube before that was featuring Alea. And I'm really glad to be here during a clubhouse Fay Day. I want to know more about like what Fay Day is. Um, if you can explain a little bit. But yeah, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. So um a few months back, um Kelly and I have been co-creating this since at least November of 2022. Um, but we started doing these Fay Days because so basically all the planets are different days of the planetary period is what I call it. Um, so, you know, moon day is Monday, um, Tuesday is Mars day, Wednesday is Mercury day, Thursday is Jupiter day, Friday is Venus day, um, Saturday is Saturn's day, um, Sunday is, you know, the sun. So um, all the planets are named after various different planets. Uh, all the days of the planetary period are named after different planets. So there's also this magic with like Venus and with magic in general and with like fairy specifically. And I don't speak often too much about that connection because it's something I'm slowly beginning to unveil. Um, but there is a really powerful connection between Venus and like the magic of the fairy and supernatural embodiment, supernatural beings, supernatural creatures, all the rest. Um, and so... Uh, on Fay Day, Friday, I will always have a channel transmission, like just a meditation and a co-creation. Uh, we used to bring in a bunch of different like co-mods and have people come through and, and share a little bit of the juice and the jazz as we then dove into a, a guided meditation. Um, now we're kind of holding it down, honestly, and we've been expanding over onto YouTube recently as well. 
So just getting ourselves out there and being in all spaces and in all nows, as Kelly would say, so that we can, you know, just be received and, and send that magic um, to as many spaces and places as possible. Um, there's a really powerful connection again between um, fairy. Well, even like there's this um, there's this book. Oh my god, I gotta find the name. I think it's Flower Fairies, and she even she has this whole account on Instagram that you could see. It's her name is Cicely Mary Barker, and she has a whole account on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, and she actually has also been calling Friday Fairy Friday, which I love. But um, yeah, we did it to Fay Day, and I think Fay and Fairy, like F A Y E R I, is actually a bit more all encompassing for like all of the supernatural embodiments rather than just like maybe F A R Y, which is specifically generally conceived of as like a fairy with like wings, um, Fairy or F A Y E R I, wait, F A Y E R I E and F A E are generally, and F-A-E-R-Y, are generally conceived of as more um, like general to all the various different supernatural beings that exist. So I also like that it's just kind of like Fey Day because Fey Day just adds up to the specific um, all encompassing supernatural embodiments that we flutter and fly with throughout the transmissions um, and the guided meditations. And um, yeah, and, and also there's just, a fey day, fey day is also a six energy. If you do it numerologically and numerologically um, six is connected with Venus and the planet Venus and Aphrodite and all that energy. So there's just a really powerful resonance with that six energy and that fey day and the magic of it all. So I wanted to make sure that fey day was a really special day that we get together to co-create and to make magic. I also do go live on Instagram and YouTube um, on Monday for Moon Day and Wednesday for Wings and Witches Mercury Day, which is like a really magical day where we just like discuss all the various different supernatural embodiments and, and supernatural beings that flutter that we eventually then end up playing with on today and during the transmissions of, of today's transmission. So that one that you heard with the, with the Leia was probably, I believe, yeah, that was the like the Solar Angels one. That one was deep. Um, we had a really Oh, that was actually the Venetian one. Oh my God, we were meant to take all the various different embodiments. Yeah, you probably heard then. Like that one was where we went from literally like the planet Venus. Then we went to like the fairy dominion and we got to hang out with like three different, different angels, like the guardian angels, the archangels and the um, winged messengers. So that was a really expansion, expanded and expansive one as well. So I'm glad you got to bask in that energy too. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Kelly. Um, so just to um, let you know, I am going to be reading. My name is Kelly Love, and I'm going to be reading for you all a code from the 33 codes the blueprint for the new earth by Annie Lamborn and um, today I'm going to read code 19 all right the game of life is designed upon the principles of transcendence each dimension differs in its transparency offering varying conditions for beings to engage with. There are no winners or losers in the arms of eternity. Each being gets to practice, play, and experience as long as one source keeps emanating creation from its cosmic heart. Each dimension offers unique fundamental circumstances under which beings experiment with their own tools of individualization. Transcendence is a journey of self-realization while loosening the self until it dissolves. Though the goal of the game is not to reach the end or victory as there can be no winners there is no one to compete against except for the mirage of the separate self. 
The adventure of fragmentation was formed as the grandest experiment of fractalization and unification. All seeming dichotomies are a rich nourishment for perpetual, omniversal expansion. Your purpose is not to transcend all worlds or realities, but to operate within them with undiminishable awareness of who you are. Your mission is not to check out from the playgrounds of existence, but to know the rules of the supreme game and play well with uttermost love. You are never a victim of circumstances as all circumstances respond to who you are. What surrounds you now is the outcome of your past. All that is outside you is a result of your previous moves and choices on the chessboard of your many lives. Nothing is permanent and all is subject to change. You have a treasured temple of creation with you. Welcome all that you encounter as a reflection of your transpired preferences. Your energetic blueprint allows you to draw to you anything you already hold in love in the core of your being. There is a small trick to your force of attraction. The key is to bestow your creative power of love upon all that you face and craftily extract the essence of one source for delightful multiplication. This has been the reading of Code 19 from the 33 Codes, the Blueprint for the New Earth. My name is Kelly Love. And I love you all in all nows. Iakaya naese kote aine kaya siyara ya sobe atiki atoria te kiti May our visions be clear and our light shine bright for all. May our soul language ring clear throughout the cosmos. May our hearts love unconditionally in all ways and in all nows. I love you, I love you, I love you. In all nows, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful souls. I love you so much, Kelly. Thank you so much for all the love and the outpour of magic that you grace our community in this space with every single Fay Day. And thank you for holding it down with me while we make it all work. This was such a beautiful, expansive day today. And we got to bask in the magic of it all so abundantly, so beautifully. Now there's 24 in the chat. There's 22 in the thing, four in here now. It's just the numbers of it all. This is making me so happy. I literally, I could play with it all day long. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Kelly is giving me out of his YouTube chat. Oh my gosh. Oh Jesus, wait, so 255. I'm like, how long are you in here? It's we so did it today. Deep. We did it. We gave him what we needed to give. We did it. We poured. We poured our whole our yeah. heart and our soul. And this is gonna be so exciting to listen back to. I hope I can you know, <laughs> have um the experience I I'm looking to, when I play this back, hopefully tomorrow um, before my flight, it'll be great to listen back. I hope the audio and everything was okay because I swear I had no clue how the audio was going to sound. And we have had been having some audio difficulties these past few day days. So I hope it's all good and golden listening back. I'm putting that out there. Anyway, thank you all so much for this beautiful Bay Day magic. It was a glorious, glorious time to co-create with you all. And it made me truly so expansive and happy to just be and bask in the magic and the beauty and the love of it all, especially with this Taurus full moon, excuse me, Taurus new moon. It was just such a perfect Venetian day. 
and we're going to get to bring this energy in through the rest of the year. Obviously, this really only happens once a year, this, this Taurus new moon. So it's going to be fun to bask in the beauty of it all. And I really look forward to it. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your Fey Day. And I appreciate you all for being here now when you were and as you have been. Oh my God, I actually just did the work. Because, yeah, it's five, right? Wait, wait, five plus seven plus one. Today's like a 13 day. Okay, four energy. Yeah, there's a lot of four energy today. So grounding is really great for this. If you do and have listened to this transmission, definitely find ways to ground, whether you actually take, I literally took a bath nap the other day. So incredible. That was like yesterday, I felt so good. I was just like, so healed in my soul. Let's drink some juice, get your fluids up, electrolytes, coconut water, whatever it may be, just dive into the nourishment of your sacred soul. I thank you so, so much for being here as you have been and for basking in the beauty and the magic and the benevolence of it all. And I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your Fey Day. It's 1458, so we started at 21. Yeah, this is a good time. Okay, I love you. I hope you have a beautiful day. I'll speak with you soon, Dove. Love you, love you, love you, love you. Bye. Bye, Jenna. Bye. 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 <laughs> you too. I hope to see you next Fay Day. <laughs> Ending that. And then bye, everyone, on YouTube. I'm closing this out as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Hope you've had a beautiful, beautiful day. Happy so much love. Happy <laughs> oh, my God. It was such a cute.